you very much for joining us this evening. And um, uh, so we're thinking about uh, prayer spaces in uh, schools where there's a maybe a, a, a big multi-faith presence. Um, and uh, helping us this evening, we've got Helen from London and Mike from uh, Birmingham. I'm going to introduce them in a moment. But uh, let's just pause for a moment and pray. So uh, just invite you to be still for a moment. And uh, with all the craziness of our days, uh, whatever we've been up to, uh, God, we give you thanks for all that we've been able to do today. We thank you for all the people that we've been able to interact with. And we ask now that you'd uh, still our hearts and our minds and help us to hear from you, uh, to learn together, to share wisdom, and uh, uh, so that we can run the best prayer spaces that we possibly can for all the pupils that we work with. Amen. Mm -hmm. So um, just a quick introduction from, uh, we're going to hear from Helen first and then from Mike, but Helen, just uh, first stop, tell us a little bit about uh, who you are, where you are, what you do normally. Hiya, so thanks for having me. My name's uh, Helen and I currently am the project leader at Christian Education Project, which is a schools of project, much like many of the other schools of projects. If you're from a schools of project, we can understand the kind of things that we do. We do assemblies, lessons, etc. Um, and as part of that, we do um, a number of prayer spaces. Um, so, yeah, we're in the London borough of Redbridge, which is kind of on the East London Essex borders. Um, and I've been doing this for just over five years. And before that, I was a teacher in a secondary school. So, Oh, what sort of teacher were you? Oh, I was an RE teacher. Yeah. You know, kind of one year in Church of England, but mostly in sort of mixed. Um, right. Mixed and yeah. what sort of schools do you work like across your, your work? Are you working in primary schools, secondary schools, both church, community? What? What sort of schools are you in? Yeah, so uh, Redbridge must be really rare in the country because we've got one tiny Church of England primary school and that's really it um, in terms of um, Protestant Christianity. We've got some uh, Catholic uh, primary schools, um, so but the vast majority of the schools are community. We also work in, um, we've also got like Hindu schools, Jewish schools, Sikh schools um, and yeah mostly community schools though and one was a couple of muslim schools and we work in all of them last term we worked in 51 schools um so i think we've hit about 54 for the year so far yeah so it's quite a few of them yeah. and and how many roughly how many of those have you run a prayer space in uh this year or ever so probably ever maybe about 10 of them this mm -hmm. year is few, slightly fewer but i think mm -hmm. yeah this year maybe we've done about six schools prayer space so far yeah mm -hmm. so, so your um yeah your area you've got some slides to show us that will give us a yeah. picture of what's going on in your area yes yeah, so it's quite a good time to share my screen yeah. i guess now. yeah yeah uh, if you're not okay, sharing your screen so do, do, do. is that working there we go yeah so this is our context so this is uh which is highlighted there so you get the kind of uh kind of a feel for where it is um the latest census um data for the first time showed that um islam is the dominant religion in uh redbridge only just though it is still very mixed um as you can see a, a, a fair amount of uh no religion hindu sikh and jewish as well um i will say though that um from our experience or just what we kind of see is that um, among the younger generation, so those in school, Islam is by far, um, it's, it's a higher percentage. And I think the Christians tend to be older. Um, so, yeah, so the schools, the schools work is slightly different because of that. Um, yeah. So, as I say, about um, 51 schools we see last year, 1,500 to 2,000 children each year do a prayer space. Um from reception to actually this year up to year 13. So it's quite a, a variety of, of people. This is so last year uh, we had some funding um, from an organization called West Hill. And uh, part of the, the feedback that, that we were uh, we had to give was um, a mixed with to ask um, each participant what their religion was. And um, 
yeah so that was the feedback so you can see it was it's 49 percent of the people uh we asked last year were were muslim 25 percent christian and that was a sample from four or five schools 700 kids but one mm. of the schools was catholic so it's still like you know 25 percent christian um mm. where a number of a number of the participants were in a catholic school um yeah so i think i think that's more or less oh yeah and that's that's it kind of um that's in numbers if you're interested in sort of the raw <laughs> data but yeah that was kind of uh yeah that that's where we are at the moment so yeah. so when it comes down to self-reporting it seems like the muslim pupils are much more confident about reporting themselves as being muslim than anybody else is or is that yeah potentially i i, I think they are there are a lot more uh, many more of them yeah as well but yeah that they are so so if you're running these spaces in what are clearly very multi-faith schools how how do you run a space that includes them in some way or is accessible to them um and yet retains that kind of christian foundation what, how do you do that yeah, so in, in a lot of the schools, most of the schools where we are going to run a prayer space um, beforehand, we'll do uh, student voice activities. Um, so, for example, um, in one prayer space, in one school where we do prayer spaces every year, um, they give us um, a focus group from um, one from every, every one child from every uh, class. So there's 14 classes in the school and they specifically select the, the pupils, different ones each year, so that there's a range of the, the the religions that are within the school are all represented um mm. and so they get to kind of talk about how prayer works for them and their understandings of prayer and we kind of we we, we kind of like to stick within the middle of a Venn, of a venn diagram basically so it's still within the christian section of mm. the venn diagram but where are there kind of some some overlaps so for example uh, it could be thematic so it could be that you know, a lot of the kids, regardless of their religion, wanted to pray about injustice or you know, they wanted to pray for, for, for poor people or for, you know, whatever. Um, and, and so that's something that that, that um, everyone said. So we'll go for that because that's that's not non-Christian. Christians like to pray about justice and, and the poor. So so that's kind of, yeah, the, the, the centre of this kind of um, the, the Venn diagram that we kind of come up with. Yeah. So there's there's quite a bit of pupil involvement then student involvement in in planning in shaping the space yeah yeah so we 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 talk about kind of especially where in some of the schools where we've done it and not for a number of years we talk about kind of what's gone well before and what mm. they've liked but obviously we also do um we preserve I don't know if the word preserve but we kind of we're sure of our role as the leaders of it so it's we're doing the prayer space <laughs> like some mm. of them have you know really fun ideas but you know, there's no way we could do them anyway you know very kind of we have to be conscious of budget you know one of them was like oh i, I think we should have a, a tree with surprise you know toy surprise egg things and then you open it and there's a there's a no i'm not buying all that sorry i can't be providing this so you know you, you don't you, it's not only what the kids are saying but we're listening and kind of taking taking mm. themes and, and taking you know the gist of what they're saying yeah so we do like to involve the kids and I find that if they if they have some ownership of it or or you know they fed into it then I think it's something that they feel connected to and, and they're they're even more confident having said that I do think that it, it works regardless mm. I don't think it only works in a multi-phase setting because we ask for their for their um you know opinions and stuff yeah 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 and so what's the response or reaction of students that perhaps do have, have quite a strong faith that is not christian yeah so actually we've just finished a prayer space so we did a, mm. a prayer space last week this was the prayer space um mm. so uh, as you can see it is clearly i mean this is catholic school that we go into and it is clearly in a chapel there's an altar there there's you know we don't normally do that because we don't normally go into faith schools there aren't that many members as i've said um many christian faith schools in redbridge but um so we did this prayer space it was based uh on on peace and um overall uh the the, the vast majority of 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 girls girls school actually they um and they really engage well with it and um you know the feedback so this is this is 
we haven't even probably got the best ones because we had so many, we had a massive pile of like thousand feedback forms. And I was just trying to kind of go through them, but you can see, so this is from a year eight Muslim girl. It's a very holy place where people can reflect. It is a quiet place. I think of if I'm, if I think if I'm struggling or angry, it calms me down. That's what they said. Um, it is, this is a Hindu girl in year seven. It is very tranquil and reassuring. It helps me reflect my feelings and emotions. I would definitely want to visit again a year nine Muslim girl very calm and peaceful are connected to God um oh sorry um oh sorry I'm giving away all my secrets here just because it's uh, sorry um yeah so it was uh hang on I think it is really nice it's a good way to reflect and maybe let out all the sadness in you because sometimes it's a good thing to just let yourself feel what's happening you know never mustn't go it's good and very peaceful you can anonymously speak of your feelings so yeah so that was the kind of response um from, from people of bit of various religions um just just this week and and i think because um because it is inclusive and it is um it's pupil led in that in that the pupils can engage with it in their own in their own ways so there's mm. not a way of engaging, not set prayers that you have to pray. If you're going to come and pray in this prayer space, this is how you're going to do it. You're going to, it's not sort of liturgical. Because of that, I think they don't feel like they've kind of betrayed their own beliefs in participating mm. in it. So even, you know, any of us, you know, if we visited, I don't know, a different place of worship or we went to a religious function for a friend or something, you know, there may be things that you think, oh, I don't know if I feel comfortable doing that. But none of that, you would you would have in a prayer space you see you can you can still interact with it on your own on your own terms to a degree yeah how how does in well how does the christian kind of foundation come through if you know in in well in what ways yeah so i think different different ways so um so in obviously the catholic school uh we are we do get to have um quite um obviously christian things so for example this one this this just prayer space was uh, about peace um so one of the bases was um about make me a channel of your peace for the prayer of saint francis um there was um there was other things um sort of, uh lighting candles we we had um injustice uh breaking the chains of injustice um where we made paper chains and it was sort of round um at one point they were sort of spread um over a cross and stuff like that so that was quite specific um in other times we we've we've had um christian prayers that have been um they've been written out and they've just, like this is here to inspire you or this is here to as an example um sometimes we've just kind of used themes that are vaguely christian um sometimes we've um we've we've said more generally like um in the bible it talks about x you know now now we, we invite you to think about this um so yeah sometimes like we've done it where it says kind of like there's been a a, a blurb and then it's said uh, and then it said um want to pray with a question mark so it's invitational do you want to pray and then if you do try, try this and it'll be a very kind of it be sort of dear Lord Jesus, whatever, but it'll be like dear God, and in a, in a way that people would would probably recognise as a Christian mm. prayer. But it's but it's um as you say, it's invitational. It's not something that they have to do. Have you got any any favourite stories from pupils, from staff, from um, it's the the kind of show the impact of what you're doing with these groups of students? Yeah, so this was uh this was a, a, a prayer space that we did in November. Um so something that has been uh, quite challenging for Redbridge um and, and probably many multi-faith areas has been um that the uh, conflict, this the situation um in, in Israel um with Gaza as well. Um and there has been a lot of um you know tension in the community or, or her or you know lots of things going on because we have a, um, a large Muslim population fairly large Jewish population especially comparatively with the you know um, with the with the rest of the country and um, it's been quite yeah it's been a challenge um, and so just just after this actually 
um in in the beginning of november for interfaith and anti-bullying week we went to a school and we did uh, the better together prayer space so this was uh, this was the write up um that came in the um in the newsletter so it talks about some of the stations that we had but one of the one of the people that came to visit was uh, a counselor lloyd dudridge who's pictured there not very clearly but um so he is the uh, cabinet member for education on redbridge council and he's um sort of jewish by birth or by kind of culture or, or whatever um but he's um quite happy to to describe himself as an atheist humanist um so but he um he came back and he had the following to say he said um i loved my afternoon in the prayer and reflection space for me it is what a modern redbridge should be all about um a borough that is comfortable in our differences that embraces and learns from each other and sp finds space for everyone i would love to see spaces like this in as many schools as possible with the world in such a tense place currently it was wonderful to spend some time in an oasis of calm um and you know he he really did i think get quite a lot out of it you know he was really engaging with all the bases and um you know he was talking to the children about um you know how they felt about it and stuff and i think it was just it was well recognized as as a place where people could you know come together and um you, you know regardless of you know it wasn't pretending that everyone believed all the same thing i don't know you know i suppose if you if you kind of have maybe some faith schools would be like well okay well, this is how we're doing it and, and you may not believe but that's what you know we just that's how we're doing it it wasn't like that it was everyone was engaging with it um but it was quite diverse and quite inclusive as as well um so that really came over yes yeah, so i was really pleased with the with the feedback and that it, that it came out came across like that yeah brilliant uh any any final um kind of tips that you'd want to give to somebody who's a little cautious about running you know they they, they might be about to run a prayer space in a school that has got uh, pupils from other faiths in any other tips that you'd want to give them uh, at, at this point yeah um i think probably just um be have really good channels of communication with the school um mm -hmm. potentially with the re department if that's the if, if that's who your link is um or just generally kind of like how you got how you got into the school um in the first place um what is the religious makeup of the school you could find that out you could find out um you know how if how things have, have gone in the past or or things like that um and i'd also yeah i'd kind of like be be not um ashamed or not kind of don't hold back in in asking questions and getting advice you know um yeah, just kind of like if if and also I th I think as well um, one thing that we've we've done uh, more recently is is having um, it sounds silly but having um, making sure that when they write on something it's kind of disposable as well because people have different opinions and stuff and and kind of some people don't um engage in in the way that you would want them to or, or whatever but and if they're writing sort of permanent things in permanent things on you know on the basis that can be quite challenging you know as well for example so we had we had one in a primary school where we had um pray for the world and we had a world map and i rather naively thought it'd be really cute to get like a coloring a massive coloring sheet like a whole sort of roll of wallpaper size coloring sheet of the world and they could color in the countries and as they were doing that they would pray for the countries and they just covered it in palestinian flags which is you know fine but then no one can use the you know no one else can color that now so it was kind of it was yeah. it was that kind of thing so make sure that um yeah i suppose that's any prayer space not just multi-faith but um yeah. Yeah. just just make sure that it, it can be kind of <laughs> you yeah. reset it at the end of every session i would yeah. say that's a big tip for me yeah brilliant Ellen, for now, thank you so much. That's Ellen, really helpful. Right. If you've got, um, just to say to people, if you've got questions for Helen, do jot them in the chat. Um, uh, there'll be an opportunity to talk about some of that in breakout rooms in a little while. And uh, then we'll come back from that and you can um, uh, follow up with any other questions. But for now, thank you so much, Helen. Um, I want to move it to Mike. So uh, Mike from Birmingham. Hi, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell us a little about who you are, what you do, what your background with prayer spaces is. Yeah. Hi everybody. Um, yeah, so my name's Mike. I'm so I'm currently a teacher in, in Birmingham. 
Um, I have been for about 20 years or so. Um, for, for a little bit of time, um, kind of leading into 2017 to 2019 or so, I was working for the, uh, the Diocese of Birmingham, so Church of England, Birmingham, um, as a school project manager. Um, I know it's a fun title, but um, the, the, the great thing that I was really loved doing was uh, working with church leaders um, and helping them to build relationships with their, their local schools. So a big part of that for me and something I became very, very passionate about very quickly was uh, uh, running prayer spaces in schools. So over those few years, I um, probably helped about 20 or 30 churches to kind of take their first steps into running prayer spaces across the city, um, across the diocese. Um, and yes, obviously, since uh, since leaving um, uh, due to uh, kind of redundancy out of, out of COVID, um, I went back to teaching. Um, I've worked as um, in church school in a church school and have been um, RE leader, um, and so kind of making sure that we had prayer spaces in schools happening between myself and our local uh, Church of England school. Um, and I'm also working on um, setting a charity up to do very very similar work to um, that was before so yeah helping helping churches and um, build relationship with their local schools um and you're also a school governor <laughs> i am a school governor yes I'm, so, I'm a very tired chair of governors who's just appointed a head teacher for uh, september so that's been yeah a massive job um yeah but yeah <laughs> brilliant so um What's uh, with the schools that you've worked with, where you've run prayer spaces, and uh, where you are? What's the sort of uh, kind of the faith spectrum of uh, of the area and the, the the schools you're working, you've been working in? Okay, so yeah, so you, you can imagine um, Birmingham is one of the most diverse um, cities um, in the UK. So mm -hmm. there are um, some parishes around central Birmingham that have a demographic of uh, kind of 85 to 90 percent Muslim um, mm. so obviously you have Church of England schools and churches um, within within those spaces um, but all across the 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 area across Birmingham across the diocese there is a, a mix of, of, of people of all faith and um, kind of living living together um, and so so every prayer space I've, I've ever worked on I think has at least one one definitely at least one person of um a kind of non-christian faith or uh or no faith at all coming through it so mm. i think my my personal approach it has been helping um people to be or helping the children to be authentic to their own faith as well as the, the staff um coming through but but mainly kind of what works for a whole group of people also works for that one person so thinking about where I've have done prayer spaces where there's only been a few people of um, kind of a, of a range of faiths, um, not Christian, um, actually allowing them to to be authentic in 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 encountering prayer spaces and as as well as as important if, if you see what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, how how have they how have they gone down? How when you run prayer spaces with the uh... You know, if there are pupils in there who would identify as having a, another faith, what what have you observed about how they engage with these spaces? Um, well, I think I've always tried to help the church leaders to kind of approach it um, as an invitation. Mm. Um, so not expecting every pupil to, to have, have a go at every act activity. And I think that works. Mm. Whatever faith you are, um, sometimes you just need that one thing and you know i remember many prayer spaces where children just want to be in the be still tent and just want to be left alone for half an hour and have a bit of quiet time and you know that's that's good so making sure that it's authentic and invitational for them and mm. um, allowing them to um, be authentic to their own faith as i said before so not putting them into a position where we might say well I'm going to pray this and and you need to say amen at the end. I think it's really important to think about language. Um, mm. And I, I really try to, to, to say to the leaders, you know, don't use the word we. It's not we are going to pray. It's 
I'm going to pray. And if you want to make this prayer your prayer, then you can say amen at the end, which means I agree with that. Or if you don't and you don't feel like you should, or you just want to listen to it, that's fine too. Having that, making sure that you really think about the language that you, we use, because sometimes it's just really easy to to um, to use language that becomes in, inclusive, mm -hmm. even if those people don't want to be included. If that makes, um, if that makes sense. So I always try and caveat any kind of instruction or prayer, and just say, you know, if you want to do this, you can. But if you don't want to, or you don't think you should. That's fine too. And again, that works for any child, really. And mm. um, they've always gone down really well. Like, mm. I, I've, is it? I, I, what I love about them is the kind of conversations that you have. And so, I always try and make sure that it's relaxed, and mm. so that the children can do what they want to do. Um, and often it come, you you get to this, you kind of just hear these conversations of children just sharing what they actually believe and you know what they think about prayer and how they pray and mm. and so as well as it being a, a space to encounter god potentially or being god's presence it's also a place for them just to think about who they are and 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 share that with their their peers and that's that i find that exciting yeah i mean yeah so it sounds like if you if you if you're invitational and you leave them to it something amazing happens uh, <laughs> yeah I, I think so and there's there's been you know church leaders that i've worked with have just been blown away by how spiritual children are and i'm like mm. well yeah of course they are. <laughs> mm, yeah. so, um so so often in schools they they're told how you know every minute of their day is planned for them and so they have to be here and they have to do this and this is what they need to you know how they need to respond to this question in mm. the history or their maths or whatever and so actually having a prayer space where they can just be and decide who the, what they want to do what they want to think about if they want to pray like i think it, it's just something completely different to their to children's normal um, experiences within a school setting no you've um i'm just sort of kind of pick up on the fact that you've been a you have been a teacher and you are a teacher again and so that whole teacher perspective is very fresh um very real um the responsibility of being a teacher um uh, is is obviously very important um you're also a governor so you've got some sort of kind of clout in, in the sense of wanting to make sure that school is doing things properly in quotes um how from that perspective how do you see prayer spaces contributing to the love for school where you know a christian prayer space but coming into a multi-faith school setting uh with your professional hat on rather than your prayer space advocate hat on how do you what benefit do you see that brings to the school um so so for church for church of england schools or for church schools i mm. think the a prayer space run well um really does add to the the sense of community um it gives opportunities for children to take up leadership um roles um it, it enables the the staff to see the children in a different light and really recognize things that are going on in their lives and mm. there you know there have been so many within big questions for example you know is my nan okay that you know those things really come to the to the fore and so um yeah staff being able to have that opportunity to see them um i think in terms of yeah in terms of governing and you know i've got Siam's probably coming up. So that's the church schools inspection um, schedule. You know, I've got that coming up in the next year, I think. So um, giving the children a, a, gen, a, a, a real spiritual experience and opportunity to, to develop is, mm. is, is massive. But e equally, I've, I've worked in community schools where they've had prayer spaces happening um, with children from uh, multi-faiths, backgrounds um and you know they it's something that they love as well and it really adds to their 
sense of community and being looked after by a local church and mm -hmm. you know being noticed and and thought about i think goes a long way for staff um so mm -hmm. so yeah so i i think yeah as i say as, as long as it's run well so yeah. that children can be authentic and it's not um yeah not kind of they're not led in a in an unhealthy way to pray when they don't want to that that would be the things i think about that's really helpful um and uh, as ever i just want to end on do you have a favorite story of a prayer space and something that happened that <clears throat> <laughs> yeah um I, I think there's this one there's a particular girl who who i when when I think about you know what we did and just the impact that prayer spaces can have like i don't know i don't know her story particularly she was a year six child um i don't know what happened afterwards but we we did fizzy forgiveness you know one of the the top five prayer space uh, activities mm -hmm. um but we yeah, we did fizzy forgiveness and she just said at the end um to always take feedback at the end from the children what did you think how did it help but she just said it just felt like I was taking off this heavy coat by being here. And I don't know what her burden was, um, but it's stories like that that make me think, actually, yeah, this this is having real life impact mm. on her mental well-being and, and spiritual health. Um, so, yeah, so there's little, little stories like that. Um, and, and another where a, a, school, a, a church leader that I worked with just felt completely reconnected with his community you know through doing a prayer space it, it just helped him to remember why he was in ministry in the first place you know and it was all about hospitality and, and loving the community and actually mm. having conversations with people and the prayer the prayer space just kind of reconnected him and that's despite me you know not being able to do the job anymore like his prayer spaces have continued and he still emails me and asks questions wow. and stuff oh. like that so so no, years down the line you know yes. it's still it's still good oh that must be brilliant you started something and it's <laughs> still going. that's brilliant mike thank you so much um again we uh, if you've got any questions for mike stick them in the chat uh or uh if they if they pop into your head in a, in a moment or two then we can come back and uh pick up on you but uh mike uh helen thank you so much for what you've brought to our understanding of how these spaces work i hope you've all feel a little bit more confident perhaps about that uh what we're going to do is give you an opportunity to chat with uh, some other people in breakout rooms you might like to chat about the uh what you've heard so far this evening or you might just like to find out a bit more about prayer spaces from the people that you're uh that you're thrown into a breakout room with um uh, contribute if you're comfortable doing that if you're happy just to listen to other people that's absolutely fine as well although we hope there aren't any breakout rooms that are just full of listeners because that'd be quite a quiet moment uh, we're going to come back at uh, in about 10 10 or 12 minutes we'll come uh, uh, so I'm going to hand back to Naomi hello go. right hello welcome back um, uh, so I hope you had uh, have you met some nice people I hope you learned something helpful and heard some good stories um if you've got any questions uh now is a very good time to ask them you can either drop them in the chat or uh use one of the things you can either uh, if you hold put your hand up there's a reactions thing in zoom so you can put a hand up um, and uh and ask away there was one question that was asked just as i sent everyone to groups i don't know mm -hmm. if you can see it now but it it was from Cheryl and it said how are the children offered leadership roles in these prayer spaces mm. uh, Mike did reply um, I'm not sure if Cheryl got the answer um, it said in schools that he worked with some have had pupil leaders of worship groups they could host the prayer space or help to plan and resource it for example mm. so do, if that answers your question that's great if not feel free to put your hand up and ask the question or feedback in the chat again um <clears throat> vicky asks where are your indoor prayer spaces especially if you're short of space um yeah we've got a we've got a photo that we sometimes show people of uh, three prayer activities in a cupboard as an example of how you can still create a prayer space in a very small amount of space 
but it is a it is a perennial issue and particularly in overcrowded schools um sometimes uh so i was in a school last week and the year fours were away on their year four trip and so the school had taken over the one of the year four classrooms to put up the prayer space and so it may be that there are times in the school year when a classroom has become available and that 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 kind of sets the sets the timing and then you can then you can set one up in a in a classroom size space uh, other people have set them up in a school hall but uh, sometimes with a the provisor they they need, they know they need to clear all the stuff out in the middle of the room because it's going to be used for lunch and so what they tend to do then is put the the bigger less movable stuff around the edges and the easier stuff that's easier to move on tables they plonk that in the middle so that in about 10 minutes you can clear the space uh, so that needs a bit of uh, work around timetabling as well but that can work uh, and of course if it's summer and we get a glorious summer and you can guarantee it won't rain you can do some prayer space activities outside uh, uh, or even Naomi in a marquee <laughs> but that's a big yeah. ask yeah we um have a school down here in Kent who um don't have any space inside but every year they commit to putting um a small ish uh, like 30 by 30 marquee in the field um and we take over that for a week down here and that's one in the primary and one in the secondary so they are very invested um in making sure they have a press space in school every year which is amazing but tim does say i'm cheating every year because it's like just putting a classroom in the field for a week <laughs> Um, yeah, if you can get your school to do that, that's that's great. But yeah, the, it, it can be a challenge. So, but creativity around where and when sometimes can uh, can make things uh, a bit easier. Oh, uh, somebody, uh, Mike said uh, so he's done them in a school libraries for a short time. Yes, we've run them in a secondary school library that has a teaching space in the, within the library. Or sometimes you can move stuff around a bit, so that that can help uh, if the school really really wants it. Uh, yeah. Any other any any other questions? Do you have any prayer space in school gardens? Ah, oh, says Emma Jarrett, who I know, I know who Emma Jarrett is. Has anybody anybody that's on the on this call now that has run a prayer space in a school garden or in a uh, this is your moment? Please uh, speak up if that's you. If you run a prayer space in a oh, I have actually, Tim. Go for it, Mike. It's, it's Mike, yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, not exactly a school garden, but um, an old burial ground, which was, um, I know, it, it's, it was nicer than it sounds. Um, You're going to have to so, explain now. <laughs> so my school, uh, church school, was directly next to the, um, the church, and they had some protected land, um, which was known as the old burial ground, um, but there was space there where we could um, be outside. So... Um, we would take a tent out, a uh, gazebo, um, and we did things like, um, lis you know, listening. Um, it was really nice to be out in nature, actually. Um, so it was more, it was less of a prayer space, but more of a kind of guided prayer session if, if children wanted to engage with it. So we would do things where they might take a stick and then go and go for a, pr uh, a walk. Um, um, you'd, you'd have a bit of um, uh, string at the end of the stick and then they might tie things to their um, their stick as they found them and you know we would encourage them to give thanks for nature um, and for the things that they found um, yeah. so it was, a, it was a nice alternative um, mm. to being in the classroom mm. um, but but yeah less less of the kind of classic prayer activities based mm. around um on a nice day, I think you could definitely do something like that. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Yeah, Penny saying uh, I do my in a Muslim teacher's classroom. So, uh, prayer spaces in multi faith settings that's absolutely rocking that. Um, uh, Janet, we've done open air sessions in a courtyard, laminate everything and tie everything down. Certainly, everything that might uh, blow away in the wind. Uh, something else, someone you might have heard me say in training sessions, if you've been part of those, is um. We, there's a lot of stuff around your parish, to use the word loosely, that could be useful. So unless it's during the summer holidays, you'll probably find that there are some fairly decent gazebos stashed away in garages around your, uh, around your, you know, if you ask around your church. And, uh, you know, I wonder whether you could create a little tent city 
on the uh, school field and uh, put like a few prayer activities in each one. And uh, you could almost have like four four or five zones with each uh, each gazebo. You've got a decent sized gazebo, like about 2.4 or 3 meters square. That's a reasonable amount of size. And you could put two or three prayer activities in each one and create yourself a little tent city around the around the playground, around the around the field. So it might be that, but to do that, obviously you've got to ask around the church and see who's got some gazebos they're happy to lend out for a week. But um, there might be some creative solutions like that. Um, just uh, I haven't ever actually done that, but um, uh, it, I'm, I'm now starting to think that sounds like fun. I might like to try and do that. Uh, Naomi, what have you posted for us? Um, I just posted a link to our stories page, which was pre-filtered to outdoor. So if you are looking for gardens, fields, we've got a few stories on there um, of people that have already done them. Um, one which we just posted a week before last is a lady called Frances who did something called a curiosity trail. Um, and that was like going on um, through a journey. Um, but there are others where there's another person that overtook um, an old polytunnel, another person, there was just like an outdoor gazebo, like wooden gazebo. Um, and it was in between the older and the younger playground areas and they weren't sure what to do with it. And this lady knew what to do with it and they put a different prayer activity in there each lunchtime. Um, so they're just different ideas of how you can use outdoors. So as we were just answering that question, I popped that in there as it might be Brilliant. Um, uh, we'll end quickly on this one. Joe said, what is the underlying purpose or vision of prayer space in schools? Um, the, the, the big picture really, it's about making space for prayer in the school. So we're introducing children and young people to prayer through which we believe we connect with God. Um, many of whom will not have had any kind of experience of prayer. And so it's very, it is very much an introductory thing, but we believe that these spaces can be profound a profound experience for pupils and uh, as as i think as uh, both mike and helen hinted through uh, some of the the stories that they shared it is amazing what children and young people discern through a prayer space even if even though we allow them to discover their own meaning to, to create their own learning um they they very often lean in towards an understanding of God being present, of God's presence being with them, um, of God being a help to them, or um, uh, or at the very least, just understanding how prayer is a good experience, is a good thing. And if that's if that's as far as they move, if they they only make those few small steps, I'm happy with that. Um, and the other thing is that it's a brilliant way of blessing a school with from the church, of a church engaging with school in a project that schools want, because it does enable uh, children and young people to reflect on their lives, to let go of hurts. We heard about fizzy forgiveness and just letting go of the hurts and, and pains of the of the past and that others have done to them. And so there are therapeutic benefits as well. So it, it, it helps, it creates a well-being benefit for the school too. But ultimately we hope and trust that the Holy Spirit is at work in people's lives and that through these prayer spaces, uh, to, uh, pupils begin to hear the whisper of heaven and the whisper of God saying, I'm, I'm here for you. I love you. So that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell, really. Um, it's goodness me. It's eight 30. Um, we are, we're back again soon. Um, uh, and, uh, Naomi, what have we got coming up next? Oh, there's a, yeah, go on then tell us about the link you posted and then what's coming up next. So if there is anyone on this call that is brand new and would like actual more details on getting started, I've just put a link in the chat, which is a similar style to what we've done tonight with interviews about getting started. Um, so that is a recording um, of a previous The Prayer Space sessions. Um, so feel free to watch that. Um, we also have training days coming up, which um, I've just put there in the chat as well, events. So you can join us for a day or an afternoon in various locations around the country. Um, and our next online, the prayer space sessions is on spiritual flourishing on the 29th of April, same time and place, but do sign up for your free spot. So that we're looking at, what does it mean to help children and young people to flourish spiritually? through introducing them to a prayer space um so schools are looking for spiritual flourishing uh 
uh, hopefully the church is all about spiritual flourishing how can we help support a school in it's uh, in helping its children to flourish spiritually and we've got uh, a brilliant one of our a team from around the country ali uh, ali rice is going to be helping us with that and she's a spiritual spirituality consultant for schools so she uh, she does know what she's talking about um uh, and she's also a brilliant communicator so we're looking forward to that one that uh, everyone is about it um we're going to let you go we're two minutes late um i think that's just about allowable uh, again, my huge, huge thanks to Mike and to Helen for uh, helping us, like, hear from uh, from the from first hand how these spaces work in uh, the places where they work, uh, and with the children and, and young people that they've worked with. Um, I'm going to pray a short prayer for us, and then if you want to go, that's absolutely fine. If you want to hang on for another couple of minutes, uh, another five minutes or so, because you've got a question for me, for Naomi, for Mike, or for Helen then you're very welcome to stay on. But for now, let's just give thanks to God for the opportunities that we have. God, we thank you for the openings that we have to be a blessing to schools, to bring peace and, and release and your Holy Spirit to children and young people in schools. Uh, thank you for this amazing ministry this ministry of reconciliation that you give to us and uh, <clears throat> help us to be uh, a continued blessing to our schools. And we do pray, Holy Spirit, that you would fill the spaces that we create uh, so that children and young people will uh, get to know you and experience you and know that you are they are loved by you, by, by you. Thank you. Amen.